your dreams and visions are your future self remembering. If you have a desire, if it's a true desire, like it's probably already happened. Welcome to Why Isn't Everyone Doing This? I'm Emily Fletcher and I believe that bliss is your birthright. That's why I'm calling on my world-class network to uncover the most potent, spine-tingling, even taboo healing modalities, all so you can reclaim your bliss. Let's do this. My loves, your ear holes are in for a treat today, as is your mind and your heart. Today's guest is one of the most gifted channelers and sound healers and medicine women I have ever met. She's also a dear friend, and she was my first sacred sexuality client where she taught me so much. It was really an initiation for both of us. I have rarely seen and felt spirit move through a human like I do with Vilana Marcus. I hope that you enjoy this episode. She's going to share how she birthed a whole album in devotion to a certain aspect of the divine feminine and all of the twists and turns that took her on that journey. And at the end, you're going to get an opportunity to witness a live sound healing and guided meditation with both of us. So Vilana is singing and playing bowls. I'm doing a guided meditation and you can find that at zivameditation.com slash why this. Enjoy. So please welcome to the show the amazing Vailana Marcus. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I might need you to, to introduce me. I'm like, wow, is that, that's me. That's you. That's, and if you want me to do a voiceover in any podcast you're on, any TV show, yeah. you could just play my voiceover. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, you don't need my bio. I have a voiceover. Don't worry. <laughs> just play the tape. <laughs> Thank you. It's such an honor to be here with you and to just bring my own medicine and energy to this beautiful vision that you have for like really, you know, allowing for these messages to just reach a different, a different a different being that you are serving in your communities. And, and I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> oh. So what we're going to be talking about today is why isn't everyone using sound to evolve? Mm -hmm. Why isn't everyone using sound to evolve? And I, I mean, until we were really talking about this, I don't know that those words have ever come out of my mouth mm -hmm. before. And so I'd love to just start there. I mean, I have a, I want to hear your whole story and I want to share <laughs> our whole story. Yeah. But let's start there. Like, what does that mean? How would someone use sound to evolve? Yeah. So it's really fascinating because I think, you know, over the last, you know, decade or so, this is becoming a more prevalent conversation. And yet I still feel like it's one of the most underrated healing modalities for overall wellness, whether it be biological, emotional, um, uh, psychological, you know, like it, it's so vast how it can really impact you. And I know this because I've experienced it firsthand in facilitating sound healings for now thousands of people. And can you just tell us, for so someone who's never experienced it, yeah. never heard of it, what is a sound healing? Yeah. So sound healing um, in the particular modality that I facilitate, um, you know, and, and sound healing can be, you know, people working with crystal bowls, crystal singing bowls, with Tibetan bowls, with gongs, with different sound instruments um, that is really trying to bring about a sense of peace and resonance and healing within the body. Um, the particular modality that I facilitate in sound is called holographic sound healing. And mm -hmm. it's using sound in a multidimensional sense to like really call forward the true essence of a being. Mm. And so um, in those containers, I am using all, you know, a variety of instruments. I primarily work with crystal singing bowls and Tibetan bowls. And I'm just guided intuitively for the specific person or group of people that I am facilitating for. And as I'm doing so, I am using my voice to channel the frequencies that will bring them into their highest alignment and highest healing. And so, you know, that can sound, I think for a person who has never experienced something like this before, it can sound very woo woo -y. And I totally understand because the first sound healing I ever had, I had no idea what it was. It was like a New Year's, I didn't want to party, found this posting about a sound healing. It was like, that sounds like a good spiritual practice to start the year. And uh, had the experience with a woman who also sings and facilitates the same modality that I do. And I felt like I went into a full like ayahuasca psychedelic journey where I was having visions. There were visceral vibrations and energies moving about my body. I could feel things in my nervous system. And this was purely 
just completely sober, just with sound vibration. Wow. And, and was that the first time you had had visions like that? Had you ever done medicine work before I that? Had, I had done medicine work before that, okay. but I had never, yeah, I had never done a sound healing. So, okay. I mean, it just felt like this is going to be something that's really relaxing, but it was actually something that was so activating and expansive. It felt like it elevated my consciousness to a place that felt very psychedelic. And that was, um, I get that feedback a lot of times from people who have never had the experience before. So, I mean, after experiencing my first session, I was sold, you know, I did, I, I went and would receive as many as I possibly could because there were so many deep layers of healing that were available to me. I mean, I, I would move through sometimes childhood trauma that I didn't even remember wow. or, you know, feeling like, my heart was expanding to, you know, have the capacity to love more and maybe let down some of my own um, guarding and protective mechanisms around my heart. I mean, it, it was, there's no like one right recipe for the way that it works. There's, um, you know, a lot of what's really exciting about this field is, you know, if you, if you do the research there is enough data backing what this is doing to your body biologically. You know, it's it's automatically bringing your waves down into deeper brainwave states. It's doing things to your nervous system, your parasympathetic nervous system. Like there, there um, you know, a vast amount of studies that talk about this work. Uh, one reference that I would offer for anyone who is interested is a book by this brilliant woman from India. Her name is Dr. Colreet Chaudhary. She wrote a book called Sound Medicine. Um, oh, yeah, and yeah. it has all all of the studies in it. So it's like for people who are skeptical or in disbelief, you know, like belief is everything. Belief mm. is a superpower. It's the reason why when they do studies, there's all these things like incredible things that happen because of the placebo effect, because our belief is so powerful. Um, and so it feels like it's starting to come to the West a little bit more and, and to become more popular in like culture in the mm -hmm. West. But this has been something that has been known in ancient traditions for thousands of years. Every culture on the planet used sound and music and singing to some degree, you know, for healing, for um, sacred rituals, you know, so many different things. So it feels like it's bringing this new wave of uh, healing modality that does not require thinking. It does not require for you to do plant medicine because that is not a path that I feel is for everybody and, and not everybody is called to, but it allows you to get to these deeper places where you get to have a very intimate experience and a pleasurable experience and potentially and a profoundly transformational and cathartic experience just by simply saying a prayer, setting an intention, receiving the transmission that comes through. And that is it. <gasps> you don't have to do any, there's no do, there's no doing in sound healing. If you're yeah. doing, you're probably going to block, you know, uh, the, the gifts that are available to you, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's profound. And it's been something that you know, I had been on a plant medicine path for years when I decided to do the certification. And of all of the medicines and ceremonies and rituals and journal work and inner child healing and all these things, you know, nothing was really working to uh, heal what I was facing at the time. It was kind of a, a really uh, dark time for me. And I used sound to heal my own heart. Mm. And what, what did that, what does that mean? How did <laughs> yeah. you do that? I, I mean, uh, the way that it worked for me, and, and I don't think that this is the path for everybody, but I took my sound healing certification um, and then uh, spent a month in isolation in Sedona and just used, you know, this methodology to really tune into like what it felt like was just like this, like almost like volcanic rock, dense energy that was around my heart because I had been so wounded and um, traumatized emotionally from so many different instances in my past. And the sound, because it didn't require for me to necessarily go back into the things. It didn't require me to create stories as to why things are this way. Like I could purely just say a prayer, set an intention to open my heart, 
play the bowls and you don't even, it, it bowls and instruments aren't even required. You can use your own voice mm. and just intuitively tone whatever comes to you in a moment. But it's just recognizing that everything is vibration. Our every single cell of our body, the water in our body, this table, this microphone, everything is vibration at a different density. So when you kind of like, you know, not really zoom out, but like zoom down into that sort of perspective through the law of resonance, everything wants to resonate with its environment. So if, um, I, I gave this example to you earlier, so I have, a uh, multiple root chakra bowls, which is, um, for those of you who are into music, it's a, it's a C note. And if I play one of the bowls with my left hand, because it is the same resonance, of the, like the prime resonance of the other C bowl, the other one will start singing without me even touching it. But only the C bowls, not the Only A the C bowls, the- only the ones that are of the same resonance. Wow. And so the way that the body works, and, and Dr. Cole Reed talks about this in her book, is every one of our cells has a prime resonance when mm-hmm. we are in, you know, like a, a, a healed and most... Um, like true essence of our being. And when we experience emotional trauma, um, you know, biological trauma, like all these things that happen in life or, or things that are just unresolved, things start to get out of tune. So it's like the piano that used to play like this beautiful, gorgeous song starts to have these notes that are just like dissonant and off. And the more that happens, like it, it's almost like it expands out to create more dissonance amongst everything else. And so sound healing can be like a fine tuning, a tuning fork, you know, if you will, of the body, of mm. the energy field, of the mind, of the emotions. Mm. This is so fascinating. It's, <laughs> I've never really heard you speak about it technically before. Yeah. I think one thing I'd like to link it back to is that so many folks here have done have have done the Ziva training or have received a mantra. Mm. And so I just want to like make those parallels. Yes. Like a mantra is internal even though you're not chanting the sound, right? Even though it's silent, Mm -hmm. just like we could see an elephant in our mind's eye, you could hear a mantra in your mind's ear. Yeah. And so that, with the mantras, we're de-exciting the nervous system through almost the internal vibration of the mantra. And sound healing, my understanding is that it's doing a similar thing, but externally. Uh, Yeah. And it's, and it's just, it's just audible. You know, Mm -hmm. if you, if you look at even like language or words or ultrasound, for instance, is inaudible. And yet they use it to heal, you know, masses that people have in the body. And you can actually watch it like firsthand in real time, healing like a, a cyst or a mass inside of the body. I never thought about that the mantra is like ultrasound. Yeah. So it's, it's not, it's inaudible, but thought is also vibration. Thought is frequency. Yeah. Everything is just at different densities. So it, it feels like it's operating in the same way, but this is just an audible experience to be able to um, tune into it in a way that feels like uh, a little bit more um, participatory from like a conscious place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so besides, I mean, besides healing your own heart, which felt like a volcanic rock and yeah. now it is clearly not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what other gifts have you, what other ways have you evolved through using sound? Oh my gosh. I mean, as a facilitator, I have evolved because every single person that I do a transmission for is entirely unique your unique soul essence is going to be different than if I were facilitating for everyone in this house. No two sound healings are the same. And so what I get to learn about the human experience and almost like the unseen information and healing that's available for a vast variety of, um, I guess we'll just call it dissonances, you know, things that aren't you expressing in your truest essence and your highest thriving. Um, I get to experience humanity in this really beautiful way. Um, And, you know, also I've used sound uh, with medicine as well, where I can go into, you know, a medicine journey. I've sang at the end of ayahuasca ceremonies. I've sang in, you know, different types of um, plant medicine experiences that I've had. And what I've seen in so many of those is, I mean, there's many things, but one of them is that like our DNA is like about two point something percent active. So they call about 98% of our DNA dormant, right? 
or they call it, they used to call it junk DNA, but now I think they use, cause it's just like, yeah, really going to go ahead and make this, 90% junk. Exactly. This <laughs> cool miracle of a <laughs> freaking body that is like the ancestor of the planet is just 98% of it is junk. Like it's really ridiculous cool, to even cool, think cool. of that. But what I could see is that the sound vibration, because it's connecting to, um, a higher level of vibration and consciousness and dimensionality, it can actually activate potential. That 98 point or 97 point, whatever percent, I'm, I don't know the exact number, um, that is all potential. Hmm. That is the potential that we have the ability to activate within ourselves. And I have witnessed that over and over and over again, where people come up to me, you know, even yesterday I opened, um, uh, uh, an event for South by Southwest for Deepak Chopra. And, and we had a room full of people and the people that came up to me to speak to me afterwards were very, very skeptical. Like in the first 10 minutes, they had never done a sound healing. They had no idea who I was, but within like, you know, the first 10 minutes, something opened for them to where they were crying without even, you know, some of them knew, you know, it was stuff that they were grieving or, or things that were kind of like blocking their heart and really feeling like they were um, worthy of truly receiving mm. um, healing. Um, but it's, it's, it's funny just because it's, it's, it's like a, it's a visceral feeling that you experience in the body. And it becomes a gnosis when you have the firsthand experience of it. So, I mean, I could really, I could talk about it for a really long time, or we could maybe just offer a little bit of sound for people to, you know, experience the magic of it so that you can, you know, so that you can have a reference point to, as I'm speaking about it, like, oh, I could actually feel this. Yes, I would yeah. love that so much. Yeah. We're so lucky. Is there anything that you want for people to know going into this? Like any context they should have or preparation yeah. they should do? Yeah, so let's just um, mm -hmm. close our eyes for a moment mm -hmm. and just take three deep breaths together just to kind of like drop into a space. If you're driving, obviously, please don't close your eyes. <laughs> um, you can come back to this later if it feels resonance, but just allow your eyes to soften and to just tune into whatever service, surface is beneath you and just feel it support you as you take gentle breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Let's take three together. Inhale all the way down into your belly. Exhale gently, feeling your nervous system relax, calm and anchor into the space. Inhale. And exhale. And on this last one, we're going to fill up all the way, taking an inhale all the way down into the root, feeling the solar plexus expand, feeling the ribs expand, feeling it all the way up into your throat. Hold at the top. Take one more sip of air in. And exhaling any skepticism, anything that is not love, and allowing yourself to just be in a space of curiosity. Take a moment to really tune into your heart. Actually, go ahead and place your hand on your heart and feel the waves of energy moving back from your hand, touching your skin, the energy from your heart moving into your hand, the heat building as you hold there for a moment, and just inviting you to tune into what would I like? What would I love most right now? And just allowing it to float up for those of you who do Ziva meditation, allowing that to just come up organically and naturally, not needing to force it. It may even be just to have a moment of peace in your day and to relax. And I invite you to just fully allow yourself a moment to receive where you don't have to do anything, where you don't have to be anything. All you have to do is be open.
the sensation of the divine and your higher guidance and pulling that energy all the way down into your heart. And when it reaches your heart, envisioning an actual diamond, a symbol of all of the resistance, all of the challenge, all of the trauma, everything that it took to forge the diamond of who you were meant to become in this very moment. you're sensing the way your body feels does your nervous system feel a little bit more relaxed do you feel a little more supported by the universe more seen more held more celebrated for the beautiful uniqueness that is the diamond of you one more breath into your heart Exhale with a sigh. And take all the time you need. So when you're ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes. Come back into the space. Hmm. Thank you for allowing me to facilitate that moment. Felt like it was full of love. <laughs> so full of love when you said like do you feel more supported do you feel more held and the answer is absolutely yes and and what came through is that you know if if everything is vibration right mm -hmm. if we are um if we are waves of vibration then when we tap into this bigger frequency, it's like that wave of individuality gets to surrender into that oceanic totality. Mm -hmm. So it's like that that coherence is not just scientifically relevant. There's also this like energy of being held by the mother, mm -hmm. being held by all that is, that, that transcends the mind and is just completely a visceral experience. And so from the bottom of my heart, thank you for sharing your gift and your lifetime of work with us. Wow, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ilana. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Yeah, it is. It's it's the greatest gift. It's literally heaven for mm. me, you know. And and um, something that I would offer to anyone who felt moved by that, even you know, if I wasn't open and curious and willing to express my own unique voice, how many people wouldn't get to experience the gift of? what comes through me, you know? Yeah. So it's um, kind of even back to like, why isn't everyone doing this? Why isn't everyone using their voice in some way for themselves even? You know, that's the way that it started for me. I did it for myself. I had no plans of doing this for other people. Mm. Um, but you then started ended, singing for yourself? Yeah. When I, when, I, when, I, um, when I first started sound healing, I was doing it to heal my own heart. Mm. It wasn't because I was looking to create um, a life you know, out of doing so. And then it just ended up that I really realized in the process that this is a big part of my dharma. Mm. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it feels like because it transcends the mind, the energies that you can connect with, like there's so much more available to us that we cannot see. And that space is such a brilliant way of just like riding in the sea of vibration of collective energy as you said where you can just fully surrender and be be in the wave of something that is 
profoundly loving and the only intention is for healing and expansion and evolution. Mm. I would be so grateful if you could give us a window into like the what's coming out of your mouth. I mean, there's the sound, there's the tone, there's the vibration, but it's also like a language of sorts, mm -hmm. but it's not English or Portuguese or yeah. French or Russian. <laughs> it's some <laughs> other language. People ask all the time. And so what can you share with us? Like what, what language is this and where mm -hmm. does it come from and what is it? Yeah. So, um, I get this question a lot and, um, you know, just like the seed sounds of the universe, like the, the creation sound is om, right? The mantra that contains all other mantras, the sound that contains all other sounds. Exactly. Om. It's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And that is not, I mean, it does have a meaning, but it's not like a English to another language it's type of transition. It's not pointing at anything. It, it, it's, 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 it actually, the languages transcend our, um, our way of kind of being in the 3D that is very linear and we're always trying to make thought and meaning out of everything. Mm -hmm. And it pierces through that because it is information, but that transcends language. Mm. Um, so you can call it, I, I have a resistance to calling it light language just because of the way that that gets thrown around a lot and used in a way that like can people are a little bit inflationary about saying that they speak light language, although it's also true. Um, what I feel is that it's actually connecting me to um, different aspects of myself that exist in other dimensional spaces. So I am me here in my physical human body. And when I started to, um, when I started to seeing these languages, when it started to activate for me, the thing that was very fascinating about it was it always felt like me, right? Um, but then I've also done sound healings for people like you, for instance, where something I've never sang before in my life, it's like actually your soul essence and something that is connected to you and your higher guidance that is activating codes, that is, you know, um, opening whatever is ready within your own system to like elevate your vibration, elevate your consciousness. And it's, uh, it's interesting because it's language, but it's not, I just look at it as frequency. Um, mm. and every single one that I do, it's not something that I study. It's not something that I was taught. Um, it just started to activate for me, you know, not long after I started doing sound healings and they're constantly evolving. It feels like when as you say we, they, you mean the languages, the languages yes. Mm -hmm. The languages are always evolving because it feels like, you know, as a collective human species and Gaia as a being or the planet, you know, as we elevate our consciousness, it's almost like the access that we have to new information to, um, you know, quantum healing that's available like there there's just so many things but it's it's continuously evolving for me so as i you know i don't know what happened when 2023 started but there are just new signatures that are coming through and you know this is not a like i don't i didn't go into that with a plan of like this is how i'm going to sing it i'm really just tuning into the moment and i'm listening to the moment and i don't think about a note before i sing it i'm just it's just coming directly through. There's no space in between. It's just a direct connection to whatever kind of divine guidance that I have. Um, and yeah, that's how that's how it's oh. happened for me. And and it's and it's amazing because I've witnessed maybe not with um, singing or sound healing, but a lot of women that I know, you know, that hold these really beautiful medicine codes. A lot of women in our community that this type of thing is really activating for mm -hmm. because I feel like the lines are being blurred a little bit by the way we always thought everything, you know, operated. It's like there's there's so much more than just what's tangible. There's so much more magic and miracle that is available. And so this practice is really directly tuning, tuning into that. Mm. Okay. So I want to talk about that moment where you started tapping into my my language. Oh yeah. And then I want to talk about magic 
and the evidence of magic. So let's start with the language. So I, so I mentioned on, you know, I did a podcast with your amazing husband, Aubrey, <laughs> and we spoke about the God bomb and mm-hmm. we spoke about that experience, which is this beautiful ceremony that the two of you facilitate that is healing and profound, truly beyond measure, like just the profundity of each of your gifts individually, but then combined and dancing with each other with that specific medicine is really, really like a true gift. Mm. And thank you for oh, that. Cool. But I, I said that when, when I, when you started singing, that it felt, I felt like a, like a toddler who got hearing aids and could hear their mother's voice for the first time. Yeah. And just tears streaming down my face because it felt like I was hearing my mother tongue. Like home. Like home. And I was mm-hmm. hearing this language that you said you had never spoken never. before. I, and but, it was interesting because it was almost like there was so much vibrato I felt, and there was so much energy coming through. I almost felt like I don't know if I can, you know, like my mind for a moment got in the way, like, can I sing this? And then I just, you know, surrendered. And it was like, wow, it was, it was wildly different than anything that's ever come through me for sure. (laughs) (laughs) So, so cool. Such a gift. And thank you for that. Yeah. Um, So speaking of magic, I would love to just take folks back to a little over a year ago when you and I first met in person, yeah, um, which is wild. Like I, I was also saying, like I remember I went to Aubrey at, and I was invited to speak at his men's group, and like something in me was just like, "Take me to your wife." <laughs> <laughs> like I need to meet your wife. Yeah, and and so a couple weeks later, he texted me, and was like, "Hey, I'd love for you to come and work with me in Milana. and and so I had the great gift of getting to spend a whole week with with you in Miami and in Austin. And I would love to, we've never really gotten a chance to share no. that story or the journeys that yeah. we went on or the manifestations that came to be. And it was, it was very much an initiation for me. And I think it planted a lot of seeds for you. And oh, so yeah. um, we just love to hear like, why did you say yes to that? Or what in you was, what were you looking for when we started that? And mm-hmm. can you remember like the Vailana of January, 2022. Oh yeah. Uh. I mean, I, it was interesting because it started to come to me probably like a couple months before in like some of the medicine work that I was doing that, um, I had already been very established in, um, you know, my Dharma as like being a sound alchemist and, and being of service to the collective by, you know, my own unique channel of what comes through in that space. And, um, I felt really solid about that. And I knew I would do other music and stuff like that. But, um, I had a, an experience in a meditation where I got this guidance that my Dharma was actually sex and sound, which I didn't fully know what that meant at the time, but I was having this full, like just Kundalini activation that was happening in my body. My body was doing it itself. I wasn't in control of what was happening, but, um, I was actually doing some healing work on a sister and, you know, the energy was naturally just moving up through my body. That was like the, um, uh, like pleasure and erotic energy that eventually like reached a full energetic climax. And as that happened, the words that I use was sending this energy to the manifestation of this woman's healing. Mm. And it was so fascinating because nothing like that had ever happened to me before. And what I witnessed was just all of my sisters that were in my life actually being tuned in to their pleasure and the power of their womb as a portal of creation, not only for physical life, you know, like birthing a child, but also for birthing energy into the manifest and just witnessing, you know, uh, the, the female body as a portal and how much this world would shift if women could remember that. And so it seeded this, um, it seeded this knowing that something was going to come along that would help me to, you know, dance with that and, and learn, um, because that was just something that happened. It was not something that I was searching for or seeking. Um, and then, you know, a couple months later, Aubrey surprised me and said that we were going to spend a week together exactly on, um, you know, really bringing me into this world of, uh, everything that I'm sure we're about to talk about. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. So what, so my understanding going into that week was like, okay, 
like, let's use, let's open up the toolkit, right? Like we had 20 years of healing modalities here. Let's open up the toolkit and see what wants to happen. Like similarly, when you're doing sound healing, you're not like planning it per se. You're just like tune in, listening, listen, see what medicine is needed. Right. Mm -hmm. And your, your experience is so vast that you could do that. And it felt like such an initiation for me and such a gift for me to get that opportunity to open up the toolkit and be like, okay, what is needed? What is needed? Not even needed, but what is desired, Mm -hmm. right? Like you're great, you're whole, you're perfect exactly as you are. Mm -hmm. And how can we tune ourselves to this higher frequency so that we can bring an even more unique version of our medicine to the collective. Mm -hmm. And, and it felt, it felt like that's, that's what happened. And so, um, there was a, mm -hmm. I, now that you're, um, now that you shared that, the other part of the me at that time was in incredible burnout. Mm-hmm. Like uh, we, my husband and I live a very fast paced life of a lot of creation, a lot of travel, a lot of like creating, curating so many containers, you know, to Space guide people. Holding. So much of that, that um, I was, I was in a place where I like I was really, really burnt out. Changed my phone number. Like I couldn't, yeah, it was like, like, no one has my number. (laughs) Yeah, I was like struggling so bad. I would get to days where I just wanted to like be in my bedroom and watch movies all day and like throw my phone in the pool because I was in such a place of burnout. So that was actually a really key point because that was, um, that was something that you were deeply tapping into. <laughs> yeah. And I think, but, and so because of that, like one of the tools that we pulled out is that we did the full Ziva live initiation. Like mm-hmm. we did puja, we did personalized mantras. We went on that meditation journey, which even though both of you had profound meditation backgrounds, meditation experience, but I'll let you speak to your, your experience of that. And then we also played with this modality of using the most creative force we have, which is our sexual energy, but using it to point towards something that we want to create create in the world, like for ourselves and then also potentially for the collective. Mm-hmm. And so this energy, I'm just calling it creation energy, mm-hmm. right? Because we could create a baby, we could create an empire, we could create a healing, we can create whatever we want with mm-hmm. it. And so, you know, we got to play with these beautiful practices of building this charge in the body and then almost dedicating it to our dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would love to hear like your experience of that. Like for me, it felt very natural of just like, yeah, of course. Like it felt so innocent almost and so easy. Mm -hmm. And so like, like we've been doing it our whole lives. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Somehow. Yeah. I mean, I I don't want to speak for you, but that's how it felt for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I really enjoyed like diving into that unmanifest space and getting to meditate with you and Aubrey. But again, let's start with the meditation. Like Mm -hmm. how did that initiation impact you or how did it change your relationship with meditation and the burnout? Yeah. So, um, I mean, when I, when we got to Ziva live and we were in person and you gifted me in the puja ceremony, my own personal mantra, it was interesting how so much shifted very quickly. Um, and also, you know, just your guidance around like meditation is not about being a perfect meditator. You're not, you're meditating to get good at life, not to be a great meditator. And so it, it kind of relieved a lot of the stress around like, am I doing a good job? Cause when you get discouraged, you don't really want to do things. And so just recognizing like, you know, first thing in the morning going into this practice to start my day and doing it another time throughout the day. Like it felt like this sacred time for me to Mm -hmm. come back to myself and to alleviate my monkey minds busy. You know, I'm always needing to like hold so many thoughts and like navigate all these things that I need to do. And it just feels like my mind is so active that just like fully really turning it off other than, you know, when I'm doing sound healing was, um, quite difficult for me. And so, I mean, yeah, like it, it profoundly changed the way that I operated in a time where I felt like, you know, once I revisited our life post our little, um, winter sabbatical in Miami, I reintegrated into my life in the same kind of situations. Like we're still, I mean, this is the second podcast I did today. I did two sound healings the last two mornings at like sunrise. Like there was like so, it's just like- Yeah, life doesn't get less busy. It doesn't get less busy. And that's just, you know, I, I was in resistance a lot to be like, I just need space. But instead of just being in the drama of like having, you know, frustration with the way that our like life unfolds, um, all of its things we want to be doing. So I, I need to also speak my gratitude for how, 
extraordinary our life is, but I started to relate to it differently because I actually felt like I had the energetic resources to be able to show up energetically to all of these things without having like, you know, feeling like I'm burning the candle at both ends. So, you know, and, and feeling like the structure of it, you know, twice a day for 20 minutes, like, it's like, that's so easy. Mm. Right. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, having, having, um, the understanding around like when the mind is busier, it's actually like, it's almost like purging and, letting things like blowing off steam yeah, so that it's not, Dubai. yeah, it's like not having to have all of that live in here at, where it's stored and then just creating, like, it's just taking up more of my life force energy. So it just, it, it made, um, it made the way that I operate in life just a lot more like flowy and graceful mm. very quickly. And how, how did it affect that bur the burnout? Yeah. I mean, I don't really, uh, it's very rare that I feel that anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, even this last week has been, these last three weeks have been like- Yeah. You've been a daybreaker. Do you have Chopra? No, not even that. South it was like, West. Yeah, I'm not even going to get into everything that's happened, but it's just <laughs> been like, there hasn't been a moment where it's just been like, okay, let's relax for a second, like come back. But I don't feel like I have the same relationship to those things because I'm taking the time for myself. Mm, good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, so we've been planting a lot of seeds, building a lot of mystery, a lot of intrigue <laughs> and something, you know, I wanted to share these stories, you know, for a long time of the work we did together because it felt so, just so nourishing. And so what we were doing is so something I'm calling pleasure prayer, right? Where we're like using our pleasure to pray. Mm -hmm. And and I, what was also fascinating is how similar our visions were, mm -hmm. right? That we were like having these visions of like goddesses coming together, high priestesses coming together, exchanging our gifts, exchanging our codes with each other, filling each other up, resourcing each other, and then becoming that transmission for the species. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun. But I know you wanted to share like, oh, the thing we were manifesting, like it it happened. So Yeah. we. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I haven't even really gotten to share that story with you. So uh, when we met, I had recorded the first song of an album that I wasn't completely finished with the whole idea of like what the album was going to be. And, um, you know, I kind of had like, I kind of had like a rough structure and, um, some lyrics and, you know, some music, but it was just like in its total, like just seed planted form, you know, it was, it was not even really like gestating yet. And when we did our pleasure prayer together, you guided me through this five senses vision of a moment in the future. I think we, it was, it was definitely less than a year. I think it might've been like eight months or nine months or something like that. It was some number of months. And you guided me through the visualization of like, where, where are you? You know, what does it look like? How do you feel? Um, and it was so visceral for me that I began crying because the vision that I had was I was in Sedona, um, out at our ranch and it felt like it was like, you know, the fall, which is typically when we, when we go there. And, um, I was looking out at the, at Bear Mountain at the Red Rocks, you know, behind where we live. And the feeling that I had was I did it. I did everything I put the music out, like my whole vision came to life. I could feel the women and men that it was already impacting and just felt that moment of like post birthing process of my art, the, the excitement and the grief and the just wow moment. Like, I can't believe I'm experiencing this right now because at the time when I'm having this vision, it's just an idea and I know everything is calling me and guiding me to do this um, because it felt like it was something that was for me, it was the culmination of everything that I had been through in my life in a piece of art and mm -hmm. in, in a, in a, um, in an album and, and then eventually into a film. Um, but it also was a message for the feminine and it was a message of empowerment and reclamation and um, the approval and the permission to feel 
like the full spectrum of our nature, which is not just like, I'm just love and light, doing sound healings and being angelic all the time. Like, it's like, no, I experience rage and I experience grief and I experience jealousy and all these like very natural human things that are so important to actually just give ourselves the permission to feel. And I could feel, um, you know, that by being the embodiment of the permission that that was okay as a woman for women to feel like they could be, you know, that they could remember the sacredness of their sexuality and the power of their sexuality. Like all of these were themes in this music. And it felt like, you know, I have to do this, not just for myself, but because this is a message that women need to hear. Mm -hmm. And um, ironically enough, it came out right after the revolution started in Iran, which is insane because I had been working on that for a year and a half and for it to come out like in that timing when the potency of that message could not be more aligned with what's going on. Um, women, life, freedom. Exactly. Women, life, and and there's a, and there's a, one of the tracks is um, called enough. That's speaking a boundary against the violation of the feminine. And um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm in this moment where I sort of have a sensing of where, that I'm going to, I'm going to do an album and it's going to be five songs. It's going to be a journey. I had some lyrics, I had some music, but then I, you know, zoom into this vision where I'm literally in tears, just visioning like on the other side of this, like who is me that I'm going to experience. And so fast forward through one of the <laughs> fast forward, um, I don't know how many months later to October, which is the same kind of vision that I had you know, the process of birthing was like the process of birthing. It was intense. There were a lot of things within me that needed to die so that I could create what the universe, you know, what, what goddess wanted it to be. When you um, dedicate an album to Kali, then yes, it's, it's going to get yeah, destroyed. Yeah, it's a, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it was a year long initiation really with mm -hmm. Kali Ma, who's, um, she's a Hindu goddess uh, and an archetype within the divine feminine that is the destroyer, the devourer of delusion. So anywhere where you have ego, hubris, things about you that are keeping you from being like fully in the truth of your power, she is like a fucking sword that just like chops off that head and it's very, very direct and it is like not compassionate and tender and subtle. So <laughs> you can imagine the initiations that I had to go through. God I mean, bless. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to ayahuasca. I just finished my song Phoenix and the f recording my song Phoenix. And this is within this period of time. I'll get back to the story, but the lyrics of it are uh, in the hook is I am. I am, I am, and that's all I ever need to be. Blah. So it's like, I mean, it's like anthemic to actually like really tune into what those words mean. I am, and that's all I ever need. Yes, to be. To be, that's yeah. all I ever need to so be. So I'm like in this like full celebration. This song is epic. Like I would listen to this all the time if this wasn't my music and I go into ayahuasca and mama ayahuasca was like, playing my song in my head and I'm dancing and it's so great. And I'm like, this is going to be such a big deal. And she goes, you are, and that's all that you ever need to be. Here are all the ways that you're not living with that in integrity. And it was like, <laughs> like <laughs> such a big dose of humility and, and really like to put out this type of music, you have to embody what you're singing fully. Mm -hmm. And there were still parts of me that were, you know, it was like, listening and bringing through the transmission, but there were parts of me that still were being initiated into like really, really holding and anchoring that in truth. And so, yeah, so that was, that was intense. I did a song that's about sacred rage, which was like one of the most difficult months of my life because I had to surrender myself, like literally like put me on the altar so that I could connect with like the rage of and grief of the collective feminine. Mm. And it was so painful it's and depressive and, and to just listen to that transmission over and over and over and over again as I'm creating it and mixing and mastering and all the things like it was a really intense time for me so yeah I went through I went through a lot yeah. um and so as you could imagine I mean I could go on and on with all the things that went wrong and I was also the label so also like putting on that hat where I'm like 
directing everyone what to do and having to really be in my masculine, which. But you stepped up, like you stepped up to that challenge. I did. I, yeah. I really am proud of myself for yeah. the way that I did, but I, that has not been my strength in life. I'm like so feminine and airy that, yeah. So, um, so in planting October, these seeds. So planting, this planting vision. the seed, this is the vision and I'm like in it and I'm just showing up to it with everything that I had. You know, there's moments where I felt like, I don't know if I can do that. Like, I don't know if I can hold this because it's, it's was so intense at times. Um, I knew that I would, but there were moments where I questioned if I was the one to do it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, you can imagine just like what a ceremony that was. So, you know, just like birthing, it's like expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. And it was messy and it was beautiful and it was glorious and it was painful and it was everything in between. Like all the notes on the freaking piano, I played them, um, to then, you know, putting my first single out in August, my second single, like right after that. And then, um, right before I released the full album and the film, um, called rise of the goddess, which is a visual album of the whole thing that tells the story has some spoken word and invocation. It's really, really, um, very, very beautiful and empowering. Um, I did a performance for our fit for service container. That was my album release. And I remember I did a meditation that day before and I came out of my meditation and I opened my eyes and I was looking out at the red rocks and I was listening to the music and I just started crying because like all of the blood, sweat and tears, the love and the arrows for how it was received by people when I was in such a vulnerable space, like all the things I was tracking, like there was a million things I would do differently about making and releasing music. Like it, I learned the hard way what not to do, but it was perfect. But to arrive to that moment, which was the vision that we had, I wasn't in the downstairs the way that I saw it. I was upstairs, but <laughs> it wasn't in the downstairs. It wasn't upstairs, in the downstairs, but, it was upstairs in the bedroom. But, but other than that, my dream totally came it true. It totally <laughs> came true. And then I went out on that stage and I mean, I put together like such a dope experience where it was like, this is a performance, but I want people to leave feeling like it changed them. And I sent it and I got to have just like the, I got to just revel in the gorgeousness of everything that it took to get there. And remember that like back in January, 10 months ago, I was visioning into this, having no idea where the hell I was going or what this was going to be <laughs> and just, showing up to every point, every point of the process and just being able to have that moment of reward. Like I really did it. And it took, you know, you can't just like have a vision and want to manifest something and then do nothing. Like it no. takes your participation. And so also giving myself like the credit for everything that I did in the process, but, but to also be the able credit to, to be brave enough to make the prayer. Yeah. Right. And, like and you, you made the prayer and then you took the action. Yeah. And it's also, I mean, in a way like that moment, why it was so special to me was because it felt like it collapsed time. Yeah. Because it felt like that me was telling that me that like that was going to happen. No matter how hard, no matter, no matter, no matter how many which, challenges. No, no matter like what kinds of detours and things had to be destroyed that so that you could create something different. Like all of the trials and tribulations during that time, like it didn't matter that like I was going to get to that moment. And it just felt like that connection between myself and myself was like something really, really magical, literally magical. It feels yeah, like magic. It is. Um, <laughs> One thing that a friend of mine, Jesse Elder, uh, said to me once is, your dreams and visions are your future self remembering. And that idea of just like, like that time collapse where it's mm -hmm. like, if you have a desire and you feel it like burning in your heart, not coming from your mind of like, I wanna have this much money because then I'll have freedom and I can get a Ferrari and then I can bang a lot of chicks. Like that's a little bit different than like a true desire that's mm -hmm. like coming from your passion, that's coming from your knowing, that's coming from your hoo-ha, you know, whatever you're tuning into. If it's a true desire, like it's probably already happened. Yeah. And it's just a matter of, it's like a paradox. Like it's already yours and you have to do everything to get there. And now right? we have to claim it. And yeah, exactly. Yes. And, yes. Just the, and just the practice of like tuning into what do I really want? Hmm. Right? 
And and what I've noticed is that oftentimes, especially everyone, but especially people who identify identify as female, they often don't know what they want in their lives. No like I teach, I've been teaching manifesting for eight years and I'm like, just, what would you love right now? And you're like, I don't know what I want to manifest. Deer in the headlights. Like, And now I'm recognizing it's because we've all been divorced of our pleasure, mm-hmm. right? It's like, if you don't know what you want in your body, if you don't know what you want sexually, it's yeah. very hard to know what you want in your life. For sure. And so we're going to start to this, um, close it up, but I would just love to hear, I know you've been diving really deep into sacred pleasure, sacred rage. Oh, yeah. And I know you've been working with my dear <laughs> roommate and <laughs> friend, Regina, and you're doing her teacher training right now. But is there anything, and I know you've been working with Rabbi Mark Gaffney. Mm-hmm. And so I would just love to hear like how this work is changing you and fueling you. Oh my gosh. Well, I would have said before, so I've been in her program. It's a six month um, pleasure certification. I've been in it since January. It's funny. January seems like it's like the yeah. time of birthing new <laughs> epic things, particularly with pleasure for me. Um, <laughs> audacious pleasure. Audacious <laughs> pleasure. So I would have said, you know, prior to being guided to this happening, like it happened very synchronistically. I, I wasn't planning on it until it kind of just showed up. Um, and I would have never thought that, like, I felt like I was very embodied sexually. Like, if you see my film Rise of the Goddess, I have a song in there called Out of Exile that's all about sacred sexuality with the masculine and the feminine. And and, and that's just polarity. It doesn't necessarily mean with a man and woman. But I am bearing myself completely vulnerably, just body painted and having a a completely authentic, erotic experience with myself. And so I would have thought like, I'm good. Like, I'm like, yeah, my husband and I have like such an extraordinary, it's one of the things that we hold as like a very, like one of our top priorities is like breathing life into our sexual relationship and our intimacy. Um, And so I would not have thought that there were more layers of expansion or even healing that I could have in that realm necessarily. Um, And so stepping into it where I am, you know, on a weekly basis connecting to my pleasure and my turn on and my desire, that's like the big part. I mean, the things that are beginning to manifest in my life are like insane, like unimaginable. I never thought that this kind of opportunity would happen right now at this time kinds of things. And, you know, um, I'm just going to say the word, which I I know might be triggering. And when I used to hear this word from Layla or Regina at, at Mama Gina, it would get like a little like, oh, um, but they say the word pussy as a, as a, as a way to, you know, not, it's not just an expression of like the physical nature of a woman, but it's actually giving, you know, the, the power and the vibration to the creative force of, of the feminine that is like always going to be, um, when it's in right resonance with the universe, it is expressing through desire. And so one of the practices, you know, that we use often is actually like being in communion, listening. And as you do sometimes in your practice, it's just like placing, placing a hand as you would call it on your hoo-ha, which is more, um, uh, applicable to men and women. And just being in a deep listening of like, I am not thinking, but what is my desire and listening to her? What does my body want? What What does my my body want? want? What does my sex want? And that doesn't even have to do with sexuality. But if you can just feel the turned on energy Mm -hmm. about the desires that you have, when I do this practice, when we are in our calls with all the women in the course, I have no idea what I'm going to say, but my hand just goes right on my hoo-ha and I, you know, circulate my hips. And it's like the most brilliant prayers and desires come out Mm. that are like, I don't even think that I could have thought of that on my own if I sat down and just wrote in my journal. So I'm constantly tuning into, you know, like, what does she want? What does she have to say to me? And I really, I would just love to share one more practice that that happened because it was so epic. So I feel very, very in tune with my body as a beacon of when there is dissonance and when there is resonance. Mm-hmm. So if there is an opportunity, a person, an environment, um, anything, and 
I tune in with my body. Like, does this feel like it's in my highest alignment? My body feels like it speaks very loud and clear. Mm -hmm. If there's a person that I feel like a dissonant energy with, it's not with any judgment, but I just like, you know, like it feels like- Discernment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it just feels discerning. Like, oh, oh thank that you. doesn't feel right. Yeah. Um, so that's been a practice that I have uh, really developed over just years of being really um, in tune with myself through different kinds of healing modalities and practices and, and whatnot. And so- that is like the beacon for me that feels like it's always the really um, consistent way of me tuning into what feels right or not. And so one of the practices that we did in this course was asking, you know, if pussy could speak to you, if hoo-ha could speak to you. <laughs> I know that's going to be triggering. I used to feel so like, well, whoa. I'm great with it. Like, okay. I mean, Regina wrote a whole book. For, for called, just for people who are listening, like I, I just want to say that I resonate because I used to feel like, oh my gosh, when, well, when I would hear it. We've used it as a slander. For we've sure. taken the most beautiful, pleasurable matrix point of the entire species and made it the single most insulting term you could call someone. For sure. And so yeah. thank God. Goddess Regina wrote this book called Pussy, A Reclamation. Yeah. Let's reclaim it. So yeah. full empowerment. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay. Um, and so the question is if 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 she could say something to you, you know, if pussy could say something to you, what would it be? And the thing that she told me, she literally came in like a queen and like the energy. And I was oh, like, is. Yeah. I was like, okay. And she said, You trust in your body's knowing more than anything else. I was like, Yeah. She's like, I am like your body's knowing with 8,000 nerve endings that is on a hundred times, like, uh, like, it's like a, oh, how did I say it? That's on like a hundred million steroids. Like if you actually just take the, tune on, t the time to tune in and to listen to me, I will never steer you wrong. <sighs> I will never steer you wrong. Please get intimate with me because we have work to do. And it was so directive and it was like, wow. You know, like I have been like almost crippled in my own like beacon of, you know, like what should I do with my life? Where's my highest alignment? Like it, I haven't been using one of the most powerful sources to deeply listen. And this is, you know, this is not about like, I'm just masturbating all the time. It's not about that at all. It's like, does the energy build a charge in your body? Like when you're really connected to your turn on. Is, is it a yes or is it a no? It's obvious. Like you can even feel, you know, if you're not acquainted with yourself in that way, like, do, do I like to be touched this way? Do I like to feel things this way? You know, mm. and then actually being in tune with what your desires are and then asking for them, mm. having the bravery. It's not even really audacity, but just having the bravery and the, the, the confidence and the self-worth worth to ask for your desires. And so how it is changing my life. This is the way I speak. I go in like big circles and then I come <laughs> back to the point I'm recognizing about my very feminine circular mind is it feels like I'm in a constant devotion to my turn on and to my desire. Mm. Can we all be in devotion to our turn on and to our desire? And it feels like if we keep putting our attention there and asking our bodies, like, what do you want? Right? That actually, if the if the gnosis, if the craving is the if the desire is coming from there, mm -hmm. then that empowers our voice. Mm -hmm. Right. And so mm -hmm. then we can come back to why isn't everyone using their sound for mm -hmm. evolution? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes because we forgot to ask ourselves what it is that we even want. Yeah. And so I would be so grateful if you will stick around. Obviously, you're so brilliant. You have so many gifts that you could <laughs> offer. This podcast could be eight more hours long. But we do have a VIP room. We have a, a very sexy VIP room Ooh. where the really smart folks go to uh, experience more um, hands-on modality. And mm -hmm. if you're still willing sure. to do it. So Vailana yeah, yeah, said yeah. she would offer us a beautiful sound experience. We might even weave together mm -hmm. a little bit and do a guided experience on top of the bowls and singing, which will be really fun. It's such a great pleasure. Let's do it. Um, but is there anything else you would love for people to know or hear before we close? Mm. Something that's been really present for me recently as I do uh, this work with my teacher, Rabbi Mark Gaffney, is um, this idea that each of us are an irreducible, unique expression, irreducibly unique expression 
of the divine. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us is one of one. And I've struggled throughout my life with, you know, comparison and measuring myself up to who's in the room or, you know, the sister wounds of competition and jealousy. And like, I've, I've been in this sort of, um, yeah, just, just, yeah, just the soup we've all been swimming in. Exactly. Conditioning, yeah. And, and something about hearing those words that I am an irreducible, unique expression of the divine that Irre can only be me in the history of the cosmos ever. Why would I want to be anything else? but who I am. And so it's really just like, like my North star these days is how can I become more Vailana? Yeah. What does that look like? And I, you know, sometimes I don't even know, you know, it, it, it takes a, an intimate relationship with yourself, but just having that idea when we're all trying to be like everybody else or, you know, the Kardashians did it this way. And so I want to wear, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but to just remember like the brilliance and the importance of your own uniqueness, like God placed you on a map right here to be you. And yeah. when you leave this place, do you want to look back and see how much you are trying to be like everyone else or how much you are trying to discover more of who you are? Yeah, It's been something that's been a really profound, um, healing for me to just move out of a very old story that I am ready to transcend. Um, and it's been, it's been a really, really beautiful process. So just wanted yeah. to offer that. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me <laughs> because I remember. So I like to ask every guest, if you could install one code into the species, what would it be? Mm -hmm. And when I asked you this earlier, like mm -hmm. this was the thing, like how can we be more uniquely ourselves? Yeah. And so it feels like that wants to be the theme of the guided experience that we're going to create together. Yeah. So oh, God, thank you so much thank for your you. amazingness. I love you so much. <laughs> I love you thank so you much. for voraciously sharing your gifts, for becoming so uniquely Vailana, for birthing your amazing album, Goddess Rise. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you? Yeah. So um, you can find me on Instagram at Vailana is V-Y-L-A-N-A, -A, V as in Victor. Um, everything else across the board is Vailana. So YouTube um, slash Vailana. Uh, I have a website, Vailana.com, which will have like pretty much all of the offerings that I'm going to uh, start having this year. Um yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty yeah, much where you can find me. And definitely check out her album Goddess Rise. Oh yeah, on Spotify, Spot Spotify, and all music platforms. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny I forgot about that one. Um, <laughs> it's so uh, good. Spotify and all music platforms. Mm -hmm. I'm, my artist name is Vailana. Great. Vailana across the board. Vailana way, all the way up and all the way down. Vailana, V Y L A N A. Thank you. All right, sweet friends. Thank you so much for joining us on Why Isn't Everyone Doing This? <laughs> if you want more of these brilliant humans, you can join me at zivameditation.com slash why this. As you can tell, there is so much goodness to be had. And if you're enjoying this, I would invite you to subscribe, maybe even find your favorite episode and share it with a friend because the world needs more of our unique expression. So thank you so much. I love you and I will see you next time. Next time. <laughs>